Once you develop a decision tree, your work is not finished. Typically, the strategy recommended by the tree is based on the particular values of inputs used, and these input values might not be much better than educated guesses. Therefore, most real decision analyses should be followed up with a thorough sensitivity analysis. Precision Tree allows you to do this quickly and easily. With a little work, you can obtain a lot of information and some useful insights. Precision Tree offers two types of sensitivity analysis, one-way and two-way. In a one-way analysis, a single input is varied over a range you select, and the effect on the optimal decision is determined. The same is true of a two-way analysis, except that two inputs are varied simultaneously. Actually, Precision Tree's one-way sensitivity analysis allows you to select as many inputs as you like and perform the analysis for all of them in a single run. In this case, each input is varied one at a time, while the others are held constant. In all of these analyses, Precision Tree lets you see the results both numerically and, more importantly, graphically. To illustrate sensitivity analysis with Precision Tree, I will use the oil drilling model in the Precision Tree example files. A company has to decide whether to drill for oil in a specific area. Before making the ultimate drilling decision, the company can run an expensive test to determine the amount of oil that might be present. Here is the completed decision tree. It indicates that the company should run the test and then drill only if the test indicates a small or large well. There are four key monetary inputs listed here and cell referenced in the tree. It is natural to ask whether the optimal strategy changes if these inputs vary above or below their current values. Precision Tree can answer such questions quickly and easily. To start a sensitivity analysis, click the Sensitivity Analysis button on the Precision Tree ribbon. This opens the following dialog box. As you can see, there are five sections in this dialog box. First, the analysis type can be one-way sensitivity or two-way sensitivity. Second, in the output section, the option you are most likely to change is the starting node. If you accept the default entire model, the sensitivity will be on the leftmost expected value in the tree. However, you can choose another starting value, often the cell corresponding to a later decision node, to perform sensitivity on the expected value from that cell onward. Third, in the input section, you can specify one or more inputs to vary, and Precision Tree provides several options for varying these inputs. Fourth, the Include Results section lets you check the graphs you want to generate. And finally, the Options section is straightforward, and you can experiment with the two available options. For now, accept the one-way option and the output settings, and click Add to add an input. You will be asked to identify the cell containing this input. Specify cell C2, the cost of the test. Then you will see the following dialog box. You can accept the defaults in the top section and you can spell out how you want to vary the input in the variation section. There are three drop-down options for method, which are self-explanatory. For now, accept the defaults, so that this input will be varied from 25% below its current value to 25% above its current value in 11 steps. That is, 11 values will be tested. Then click OK. Then add three more inputs, those in cell C3, C4, and C5 letting each of them vary in the same way as the input in cell C2 varies. Then the original dialog box includes the four selected inputs, as shown here. Note that each of these inputs is checked. Anytime you run a one-way sensitivity analysis, only the checked inputs in the list are varied. So you can add as many inputs as you like and then uncheck some of them temporarily if you don't want them to be part of the current sensitivity analysis. 
Also, note that all of the graphs in the Include Results section are checked. The bottom two options, Tornado Graph and Spider Chart, are enabled only when at least two inputs are checked. Now they're disabled. For now, accept all of these options and click OK. You will receive 10 new worksheets. Each contains a graph and a table of graph data. First, there is a sensitivity worksheet for each of the four inputs. Each shows a graph of the expected value for the optimal decision for the range of input values specified. For example, here is the graph for the cost of drilling. The expected net payoff decreases linearly at one rate and then at another rate as this cost increases. You will see why there are two rates shortly. Second, there is a strategy worksheet for each of the four inputs. They show how the expected value for each of the decisions varies. For example, here's the graph for the cost of drilling, where testing is shown in blue and not testing is shown in red. You are typically looking for where these lines cross because this is where the optimal decision changes. In this case, they cross somewhere between 550,000 and 600,000. The sensitivity graph you saw earlier is simply the maximum of these two lines. That is, the red line on the left and then the blue line on the right. Third, there is a tornado worksheet that shows how the expected value of the optimal decision varies as each input varies. Each range in the expected value is shown as a blue bar, with the longer blue bars at the top, hence the name tornado. It is clear that the expected value is most sensitive to the revenue from a large well and is least sensitive to the cost of the test, at least for the range of input values selected for the sensitivity analysis. Finally, there is a spider worksheet that shows a line or curve for how the expected values change as a given input varies over its range. The steeper the line, the more sensitive the expected value is to changes in this input. So the revenue from a large well and the cost of the test are again identified as the most and least important inputs. Blue and yellow. To run a two-way sensitivity, you select two-way sensitivity as the analysis type. Then you see an X and Y checkbox for each of the inputs in the input section, and you must select exactly one input for the X variable and one for the Y variable. For now, I will select cost of drilling, C3, as the X variable, and the revenue from a large well, C5, as the Y variable, and click OK. You will receive two new worksheets. Again, each has a graph and a table of the graph data. First, there is a sensitivity worksheet with a 3D graph that shows how the optimal expected value varies as the two inputs vary. Cost of drilling and the large well revenue. Second, there is a strategy region worksheet with a graph that shows, by means of shapes and colors, which decision is best for each of the combinations of the two input values. Here it is clear that not testing is best when the cost of drilling is low and or the revenue from a large well is high. All of these red triangles. As mentioned earlier, you can select a different starting node in the sensitivity analysis dialog to see how sensitive the optimal expected value from that node onwards is to input variations. For example, cell E29 is a good candidate for such an analysis. It corresponds to the decision on whether to drill, knowing that an indication from the test is a small well. By this time, the cost of the test has already been incurred, so the only three relevant inputs are the cost of drilling, the revenue from a small well, and the revenue from a large well. This suggests setting up a one-way sensitivity analysis as follows. I will uncheck this first input and I will choose cell E29 as the starting node. 
The most interesting results from this sensitivity analysis are the strategy graphs. For example, here is the strategy graph for the cost of drilling. It shows that the decision to drill is easily the best decision for all values of the input. The other two strategy graphs for the two revenues are completely similar. They also show that the decision to drill is clearly best over each input range. Such information provides confidence to the decision maker that the drill decision is indeed best, even if the estimated input values are not exactly correct.